Asia's two biggest democracies are holding elections. India's 800 million voters are in the middle of a six-week-long process to elect a new government. And the sprawling island nation of Indonesia has just finished voting for parliamentary seats. Results won't be out for about a month, but opinion polls show the opposition, Indonesian Democratic Party of Struggle, known as the PDIP, ahead in the race. These are Indonesia's fourth democratic election since the military dictator Suharto was overthrown. And there have been no reports of any irregularities or trouble. In India, which is holding its 16th general election, the atmosphere is much more tense. The ruling Congress party seems headed for a massive defeat. The opposition Bharatiya Janata Party, or BJP, looks likely to end up with the most parliamentary seats. But it's being pressed by the upstart Am Admi, or the AAP. And politicians and their supporters are getting violent in word and in action. Here's our contributor in India, Ajoy Bose. With still more than a month to go for the finish line, Election fever here has already reached an extraordinary pitch. Hate speeches, physical assaults on leaders, and relentless controversy promise to make this India's 16 general elections perhaps the most volatile ever. In India's largest state, Uttar Pradesh, scene of bloody riots between Hindus and Muslims last year, communal passions are again being stirred by inflammatory speeches. Last week, a Muslim Congress candidate was arrested for threatening to chop up in little pieces the BJP's Prime Ministerial hopeful Narendra Modi. A few days later, Modi's own close aide added fuel to fire by asking Hindu peasants to take revenge for last year's riots by voting for the BJP. This week, the rhetoric turned even more nasty. A prominent Muslim leader of the state's ruling party made the preposterous claim that only Muslim members of the Indian army were brave enough to fight Pakistan, in effect calling Hindu soldiers wimps. In the capital Delhi, there were ugly physical assaults on the former chief minister and ARP leader Arvind Kejriwal. He was twice slapped and punched as he campaigned on the streets. The ARP has accused the rival BJP and Congress parties to have masterminded the attacks. However, Kejriwal has refused to be intimidated. Instead of pressing criminal charges against his assailants, he has managed to reach out to them and elicited their abject apologies. This elections also been marked by unprecedented involvement by the social media. Both the BJP and ARP have used the internet to promote their campaigns and both have received overwhelming response. Twitter wars and animated Facebook debates are now a daily ritual and likely to remain this way for the next month. Significantly, social media platforms, technology firms, e-commerce portals and telecom operators are using this opportunity to connect with users. Tech giant Google has revamped its election hub to include features like a pledge to vote campaign, a Google score tool to rate politicians, search for trends and infographics, YouTube election playlists and hangout details for users. Clearly, despite the Indian public's disenchantment with politicians, Indians still believe their votes matter, and elections here are both increasingly competitive and popular. For Link Asia, this is Ajoy Bose in New Delhi. Nearly a month after they occupied Taiwan's legislature, 200 university students marched out in triumph. They won a promise of a new law that would give legislators more power to review agreements with mainland China. The students stormed the legislature on March 18th to protest such a deal. They accused the government of ramming through a trade pact without enough consideration by parliament. They got a huge amount of public support and became popular heroes. Opinion polls show concern that China will swallow up Taiwan's economy and eventually its quasi-independence. Airwaves. 
a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.